G'day Ratbags and welcome to another episode of Dirt Riders TV. Bag it up! In today's episode, I'm going to show you how I made a cheap and effective set of racks that are also light and removable. So sit back and enjoy the ride. I started out just finding a box that was similar to the size I wanted. Threw the bags on, grabbed the black texture and then began to draw out a bit of a template as to the size and dimensions I'd need. Once I had the sizes, I took it down to the metal shop and got them to fold up a bit of aluminium for me. So one of the reasons I chose the aluminium plate, 4 mil thick, as much as it looks like a bulky situation here at the moment, is because at a later stage, I'm thinking about cutouts, being able to put slits and grooves wherever I need them, bolting in additional pieces that may hide up underneath here, or up underneath here and just in general being able to modify it to suit a more useful purpose than just a bit of friggin pipe hanging off the side so as I look at the position I want to have this tool rack I'm going to keep it nice and tight to this exhaust it's not an exhaust it's a toolbox so there'll be no heat on this side that'll give me an extra gap in here to keep it cool the next thing I want to do is try and have it as forward as possible. As for where it sits on the bike, I would like it to be able to keep these blinkers exposed past that piece of tin, just so that gives traffic a bit more awareness of where I'm going to turn. I don't want them to be hidden up and under, because then only traffic directly behind me can see the signals. So I'm going to bring the plate forward to about there which means this seat will have to be trimmed so I'll probably trim out a section like that to keep this seat access available and I can take that off at any time then just need to mark out where these bars are and drill the holes up in top for all these four U-bolts to hold on to. This is just protective plastic at the moment. That'll come off later when I'm ready to have the finished product. So these are the U-bolts I chose from Bunnings, a local hardware store here. And I've got some nylon lock nuts just to hold them in place so I don't want them rattling off. And to tie it all together, we're gonna to use these tie down straps as well as the old standard, well, they're calling them octopus straps. As a kid, we called them yockey straps. Could be a million other names for them, but they'll, they should do the job. So in order to get the measurements, I've put the rack in place, and I've used this pencil to mark where it's sitting, this front edge, so that we know where that is. From there, I'm just gonna lift this back, use the ruler, and then measure how far each individual bar is and then write it down. So I've done that. I've written down my measurements and each measurement's gonna be different depending on what rack you've got. So I now know when I have it in position and when my, using my pencil and from the front edge, it was back 140 and 160, that's my first bar. Next one was 210, 230, that's my second bar. But they are not the same distance apart. As you'll see, this bar is slightly smaller than this bar here. Not by very much. So what I did, I just kept the plate on top here and I marked the inside of this bar, the inside of that bar, and then just moved it back and using the bar marks I centered it and just did a best guess for the back ones so best guess is good we're only drilling a couple of holes here for the brackets so the brackets can come up and hold that plate in place and I did the same with the seat in order to get this shape 
I basically put my pencil in place, moved it back, measured how far it was to the seat, I added another 10 mil from there, put a line at 70 mil, that's how far that is. Pushed it back in place, then I just sat my ruler on the side, seen where the edge of the seat was, put a mark, edge of the other side, put a mark, and then I just eyed up how far in that was and had a guess for that one, drew a diagonal. So that's ready to be cut out, and we can drill these holes now, and we're good to go. Before you get started drilling so that the drill doesn't bounce all over the place, you use one of these, a center punch. It's got a little tip on it. Put it on the spot you want to start your drilling. Give it a whack. Good to go. Now the drill will sit in the hole and stay there and go straight through. There we go. And depending on where you're working, you don't want to just flick these shavings on the ground. They can be a little bit sharp, so I'm just going to sweep them up and Put them where people won't walk on them. All right, now it's time to cut out the seat hole. Flat battery, that's no good. I oh, know, let's try that again. I highly recommend you use a cord grinder for this. I ended up using all of my batteries. And now here at the end, you just want to brush over the edges, make sure there's no sharp burrs or anything to cut yourself on. So I did make one mistake. I drilled the holes for the size of the bar not the size of the year bolt so I'm gonna to have to go and do an extra hole for each one of these just so we can get the year bolts in oh well these things happen on the big job <laughs> you better believe it all right so we're back in business these now fit in just like we want but I want to put them in facing up ways mostly because underneath here I won't be able to get any spanners to do them up so once I get these in they'll poke up the top I'll bolt them off and then just cut them off flush so before I bolt it on I've decided to put a couple of bits of rubber here just to stop it scratching the back rack as it rattles around I just cut it out of an old tube Okay, so I've lined it up, got it in position, most of the gaps on that side and stopped the heat. Now it's just a matter of putting the plates on, the nylon nuts, bolting it up, cutting them off. 
just time to take off the wrapping before I bolt it all up. Oh no, there we go, it's all bolted in and it actually bowed a bit which meant that wing tipped out even further from the exhaust so that'll be of a benefit to me. Time to chop them off. There we go. So the next thing we've got to do is drill two holes, one here, one over here, the same on the other side. That's for these tassels to tie into at the bottom of the bags. So let's get that done. So now they're all tied in, nice and sturdy, we'll get on to the next part. As you can see, Dave the Dingo is all set to go and we're pretty packed up. We've got all the tent gear in the blue bag, some technical stuff in here, more clothes and of course the old toolbox is full of tools. Plus we've got the backpack. For all the essential stuff that won't fit in. But with everything packed on the bike, the old Stormtrooper cruised along with a nice comfortable ride. Even if it was a little bit heavy in the back end. That's because as my old Scoutmaster used to say, be prepared. And now we got the room for it. And with everything loaded up, there was only one thing left to do. Get outside and play. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to click the thumbs up, subscribe, and notification bell all, so you don't miss out on our next exciting video or upcoming event. Also, scroll down to the bottom and leave a comment. Let us know what you liked or would like to see more of, or just a simple thanks. Comments really help the channel grow and bring you more of what you like. That said, and don't forget to bag it up. <laughs>